Hey everyone, this is Jonathan with the Hope Movement, and um, I'm just uh, we're starting at this um, five-minute teaching series just to cover um, some brief co topics that we can uh, share with you that hope hopefully will uh, edify the church and will encourage you all, um, and we'll also maybe answer some questions that you might have had as well. So um, today we're going to be talking about the edification of the church. And so this is going to be a really quick um, run through of edification of the church. And so I hope that this um, really encourages you. So let's get started because this is a five minute teaching. So we're going to start with the body of Christ. And uh, let's start with this uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are, are one body, uh, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we have been baptized into one body, Jews and Greeks, slaves and free, for and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am uh, not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong um, to the body, um, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, uh, where, uh, where would the sense of hearing? Where would be the sense of hearing? If the, body, if, if the whole body were an ear, where would be uh, the sense of smell? But as it is, uh, God, God arranged the members of the body, each of them as he chose, and all were single member. Where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. 21. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have, no, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on the, those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our un, un, unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. With our more presentable parts, do not require. But God has so com composed the body, given greater honor to the part that lacked it, and that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one suffer member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is, is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ, and additionally, individually members of it. First Corinthians uh, 12, uh, 12 20 through 27. So we need to look at several things. Um, as, we, as we are a body, we're all in need of, of each other. That, that is the body of Christ. We've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, um, sealed by the Holy Spirit. Um, and, and for every believer that is regenerated, born again. Um, and so um, we need to edify our brothers and sisters with sensitivity. Um, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another, Romans 14, 19. So it's important to be sensitive, um, but also not, not sensitive in the sense where you take offense so easily and then you never forgive. Um, and then you put a wall up and you block yourself from, from people. That's not true forgiveness. That's actually um, sinfulness. Um, and uh, if you're separating yourself from others, that is, uh, once again, that's uh, sinfulness, and, and that needs, uh, re requires repentance. Sensitivity is being sensitive to other people. It's putting your own, se uh, own feelings and own uh, hurts and pains and setting that aside and truly forgiving and loving someone unconditionally because that is the fruit that is being born uh, within yourself. That is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Edify with, un your, our, edify with unselfishness. So let us eat, let each of us please his neighbor, for it is good, leading to edification, Romans 15, 2. So we have to be unselfish. Um, and sometimes it's hard to do, but that is what we're required to do. And it should be something that is a sign of the Holy Spirit that is working within us, that he's, that he's causing us to be peace, peace um, makers, and also that we're having self-control and we're being unselfish um, with all that we do. And that means forgiving putting aside your selfishness, forgiving, embracing someone, loving someone, praying for someone, and we'll get into that. Edify with our, with our respect. Therefore, I write these things, being absent, 
lest being at present I should be use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not for destruction. Second Corinthians thirteen ten. Paul had um, had a lot of issues with the church of Corinth, and uh, he had he had to put them out there and put them in check. Um, and and yet, even though he needed to do that, and he had the authority to do it as as, as an apostle apostle called by um, by Jesus himself. Um, he, at the same time, he wanted to be careful. In, in his in his manner of of speech um, that he was bold and that he was direct but at the same time he wanted to edify the body of uh, the believers edify with our love now concerning things offered to idols we we know that we all have knowledge knowledge puffs up but love edifies first Corinthians 8 1 and if I have pr- pr- uh, prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge um, and if I have all faith, for and so I, I can remove a mountain, but have no love, I am nothing. First Corinthians thirteen two. This is important. Um, this, uh, that this love is is something that is unconditional, regardless of what you've done to me. No matter what you continue to do to me, that I mean, think about it. If we say love our enemies, and yet people that are in the church, they're our brothers and sisters. They're, they're adopted children into the family of God. They shouldn't be our enemies. So if you're called to love your enemies, then how much more should you be loving a brother and sister regardless of the hurtful things they might have done for, to you? And, and, and so it's a, you need to put that in check. It's not Forgiveness is not about their response to you and if they, they do the right thing. It's about you get doing the right thing and forgiving and loving them um, unconditionally. And, and this goes on, on also. We, we get so cocky sometimes when we learn theology and we think we have greater knowledge and then we, we get become sarcastic when someone is uh, less, lesser knowledgeable or maybe they just have a hard time with the sovereignty of God or um, with the, these profound doctrines and they... Um, so we, we, it causes conflict, and we need to be careful of the way that we share this. We should be wanting to teach brothers and sisters and, and disciple them and guide them, but in a loving way, not in a sarcastic way, in a hurtful way. So we edify with our gifts as well. Um, for, as in one by, for as in one body, we, have, we are many, many members, and the members do not all have the same function. Um, so we, though many, are the body of in Christ and individually members of one, members one one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, uh, in um, proportion to our faith; if service in our serving; the one who teaches in his teaching; um, the one who exhorts in his ex- exhortation; the one who contributes in generosity; the one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness, Romans 12, 4 through 8. Um, so this is something that's so important that you are required. It's a, it's a command by God that each bo- member of the body of Christ, that they get involved, that they, in, they contribute. Um, and, and this is not always meaning that you just have to be busy um, doing things like ushering and greedier and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the people the, there's people that are definitely... Uh, love that and, and it's great but really we we are to love one another we should be concerned about we didn't see brother or sister so and so in a while i wonder what happened to them let me let me find out it's not out of like being a nosy but it's out of love and true concern for them um, it's about evangelizing outside of the church something that we have to understand that the the church is a believers meeting it's a it's for the believers it's not a place to try to win souls uh, this is a place that is believers born again that are meeting together, and then you're getting equipped to go out and use your you, you, to, to preach the gospel. And as people that you come in contact with and are hearing the gospel become regenerated and born again and, and come to salvation, then they, they're welcome with arms open wide to be part of that privilege to be part of the believers meeting. And so um, this is something that's uh, important to understand. As he himself gave some of to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, for the equipping of the saints, equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, Ephesians 4, 11 through 12. So we had edify also with our testimony. So here we had uh, people coming to Christ um, in, in, in Jerusalem, and then we, we start seeing um, this, 
we start seeing this this big move of of uh, of God just doing uh, regenerating people and people coming to Christ. And it said the the church had peace throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and it it became stronger as the believers lived uh, in the fear of the Lord. And with encouragement of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. Acts nine thirty one. So as we share our testimony with one another, we will we will grow as individuals and we'll grow as a body. And then also as we go out and we preach the gospel, people will come as well. New believers will come in, and that church, your church, will grow. Edify with your words. And this is something so important uh, as we're in- engaging one another. Maybe we're we're having differences in theology we have differences in and uh and whatever it may be it, it could be just pettiness as well i i've seen so many people in line that just have that i, I would be i'm i'm ashamed to to see them as christians professing christians to be talking the way they are and it may not be even curse words or things like that but just sarcasm the this kind of like macho type talk where you trying to outdo the other person and try to you know sling around all these like fancy words to try to because you you you're just puffing yourself up of your knowledge and things like that this is not out of love this is out of uh, being conceited and it's it's un it's unbecoming it's and it's unbiblical at the same time and so these are some important things to remember as you comment or you're blogging or you're writing or you're sending emails or you're just having conversations um, but now you also um, put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abuse, abuse of speech from your mouth, Colossians 3.8. Let no unwelcome, uh, unwholesome uh, word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word that is good for edification according to the need of the moment, so that it will give uh, grace to those who hear, Ephesians 4.29. Let, our, let your speech always be with grace. As the salted was uh, seasoned with salt, so that you know you will know how you should respond to each person. Colossians four six, for whosoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. First Peter three ten, let the words of thy mouth be in the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalms nineteen fourteen. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, um, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Ephesians 5, 4. Being filled with all unrighteousness, wicked, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice. They are gossips. Uh, Romans 1, 29. And so this is something that's very important. Uh, we need to be careful how we we speak to one another, um, and sometimes people also say that use Galatians uh, when they're talking to other brothers that maybe are um, they're teaching maybe they just they don't know correct teaching, um, and and they're having um, you know they're just having a disagreement and they become real harsh, and they say well you know Paul he talks that way in Galatians and so I I have every right to, but also if you look at Galatians and he starts off I'm astonished he calls them uh, basically liars and uh, ba- close to basically apostates as well. and um, But he also had the authority as an apostle as well. But at the end of, of Galatians, you also see him as because he's writing this letter. And so you start seeing him like, I'm perplexed by you. I don't even know how to speak to you. And, and uh, before you would take out your eye and give it to me, but now I'm your enemy because I told you the truth. And so you're seeing him in conflict of, that he really, at the end, then he calls them brothers. And so you see that he's, you know, as he's writing, he doesn't know how to exactly um, gauge how they're reacting to this letter. And so he's he's thoughtfully thinking through, I've said the, the tough things, and now I'm softening it. Um, and for, for the, for the edify the brothers and sisters. And so that's something really important to, to remember. Edify through prayer. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, Pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great, great power at it as it is working. James 5, 16. Pray for one another. Confess your sins. You're, you're, you're meant to work with each other and be accountable to one another and help one another. And we're going to get into that in a minute. This is something that's so important. Edify by forgiving. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew 6, 14 through 15. And whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you uh, your trespasses. Mark eleven twenty five. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Ephesians four twenty thirty two. Now, if anyone has caused pain, he has caused not to me, but to uh, but in some measure not to put too uh, severely to to all of you. For such a, a one, this punishment by the majority is enough. So you should rather turn to forgive and comfort him, or he may be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. Two Corinthians, Second Corinthians, um, two um, five through seven. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And in one has uh, a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. So you must also forgive, Colossians three twelve through 13. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so that you must forgive, Colossians 3.13. So forgiveness is not just uh, saying, um, uh, I, yeah, I forgive you, um, but it means that you, you go on behaving exactly the way you did before, out of love, compassion. You don't, you don't put walls up. You don't stop um, serving. You don't stop. Uh, you don't just go and uh, make a, you know, fulfill your obligation and sit in a Sunday service, but you get involved, you, you engage with people, you get out of your comfort zone, and you, you, you uh, speak to one another, you love one another, you pray with one another, you pray for one another. And so even this pe that person, that if the other person continues to not um, behave in the same way, that's the, the, between them and God. But if you're not forgiving, if you're, if you're holding on to this, then you haven't forgiven and you're sinning and you need to confess those sins and you need to repent and turn away. Repentance means to turn from it and turn away. This is sinful behavior that needs to be put in check. It doesn't matter what the other person, uh, what's going on. It doesn't matter. That person on the other side, we pray for them that they will come to repentance, but regardless it's about you and you and and you getting yourself right and doing the right thing, um, and so that's something important. And it's also important um, that that um, that you don't hold on to these things. Um, so going along with that, maybe that person is didn't um, repent to you. Maybe they're still acting uh, in a in in a negative way or making you feel uncomfortable. The Bible says this: bear one another's burdens. So what does that word burdens mean? That doesn't just mean people's um, having a hard time in their lives, you know, the financial problems and things like that. It also means their sins. Carry their burdens, their sins, because you're, you're worried about their, the sins that they're maybe struggling with. And so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. In other words, you, we are all saved by grace. And so who are you? to not give grace to another person. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. Let the, um, let the, let the one who uh, is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not, is not mocked. For whatsoever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows uh, to the to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows uh, in the spirit to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially to those who are in the household of faith, Galatians 6, 2 through 10. So we are equipped to edify. And it, it says this uh, quickly in, in Galatians um, chapter 2, um, 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 
and the life I live in, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself, um, gave himself for me. And so he who descended is the one who also ascended far above the heavens, that we, he might fill all, fill all things. He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all obtain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the, mature, to the measure of the, of, of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by the wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by crafting, craftiness and, and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which is, it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Ephesians 4, 10 through 16. So as believers, we are equipped to, by the Spirit of God, to take up our cross and build up the church. We can resist our carnal nature and by staying humble in the process and of growing in the faith, our Father longs to see his children help and edify one another for the building of Christ's kingdom. And so this is um, this quick session here about edifying the church. I hope it was an encouragement, and I hope you have a <clears throat> excuse me. I hope you have a blessed evening and a great weekend. And we'll talk to you soon. God bless.